That's right. It's what you've been waiting for. The Monkey and Big Show. 365. Fantastic. Uh, subsection, of course. Here. Nostalgia Biggs. You guys wanted it. You got it. He's here. <laughs> How long did that intro take you? Uh, I thought of it about two minutes ago. <laughs> Someone yeah. complained there was too many Rice Krispies. So I said, hey, let's switch it up. I'll put in some hard work. Man, you should have played it like three times, uh, Rice Krispies. Oh, I can play it again. I wasn't done drinking my coffee, but we were a little late. I, just... I, was, okay. I was saying play more Rice Krispies. Yeah, you can talk over it and play it again. It's very loud, though. Okay, Biggs did not want to talk over it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> hey, Patchy and uh, fan fans Talja. Became members of the Measly Few. Thank you. Uh, Biggs, are you a, a fan of podcasts? No, not really. So there's this idea in podcasting <laughs> that when a duo grow to hate each other on a personal level, they'll just start inviting a guest on every episode so that they don't have to be alone with each other. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I've heard this before. We go on. No, that was it. So, oh, okay. So you wanted to talk about Dan Schneider. <laughs> Dan Schneider? Yeah. I mean, sure. We could talk about Dan Schneider. <laughs> oh, uh, we also have Everidge McCoy in the flesh. Oh, that's Yo, the third guy. how's it going? Oh, you thought I that's invited right. Dan I'm, I'm... on for you to, to debate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought that's who we brought on. <laughs> wow. That's that's a, and our fourth guest, I've got him right here with me, <laughs> Dan Schneider. I'm actually roommates with Dan. Well, did you guys see Dan Schneider's rocking the most insane evil guy goatee of all time? Yes. So, yes. like, Everidge cannot even compare to what Dan's got no. going on in a he lot of ways. He's slimmed down a bit, and he's got the, the, big, uh, the mm -hmm. big goatee going. Mm-hmm. And I guess I is that the, the picture? Of him. Oh, I thought that was the main thing you wanted to uh, discuss about him. Like your main complaint about his actions was the facial hair. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's probably the worst thing he's done to to date. I would say. I'll have to pull up a picture of him real quick. I haven't seen him recently. Uh, so this is all because there is a new documentary out on Max called "Quiet on Set." It was a four part miniseries. Documenting, uh, some people had some complaints about Dan Schneider back in the day. Really? Uh, That's amazing. Because I, I have always known him as just a, a very sweet, very kind, very intelligent man who's done nothing wrong to anyone. There is a, a theory that this only happened because of Filthy Frank and that Filthy Frank mm. uh, really put this into the, the public spotlight more than anybody. And I lie. doubt that's true, but I hope that he gets some credit. I'm not going to lie, when I looked up a recent picture of him, I thought it was Dark Side Phil. <laughs> Just Holy straight shit. up. Who would you rather up... be right now? Probably neither. <laughs> Is that the, f the first poll of the day for the chat, the live chat? <laughs> yeah. We did do a poll, best podcast host between E. Rich Biggs and Mumkey. Uh, I thought mm -hmm. it would be like an easy joke poll, like let's all vote for E. Rich, but no, they just... No, no they never not. go for the joke. They <laughs> never do. Mm -mm. No, so should I even read the results or we can just move on? Read right? the results. Read the results. So, I want to see. So the I result. won with forty five percent. Motherfucker, you're not even you're you're not even a guest. You're you're the host. It just says host. I consider us all oh, okay. equals, separate okay. but equal. Wow, wow. All right, yeah. A big's got thirty eight percent, and uh, E Rich eighteen. Eighteen. I was at nineteen for a time. What the fuck happened, people? Why I mean, did no one vote for me? Eighteen percent for how many times have you been on the podcast on this channel? <laughs> That's pretty good. No. That's pretty I, good. I should make an E-Rich playlist. He's the only one who doesn't have one. So we don't know oh, yeah, any. Totally. Okay, so the poll, who would you rather be right poll now? This poll was rigged. A rigged election. I don't like to see it. Yeah, it's the mail-in votes that did you in. Aw. Patchy's wife voted for me. 
Okay. She's a sellout. <laughs> okay, before I hit enter, I'm going to make you guys go head to head right now. Uh, the question is who would you rather be, DSP or Dan Schneider? Uh, who do you think is going to win? I want to hear if you guys have different answers. Biggs, who do you think is going to get more? Should votes? we put it in chat? That way, chat doesn't know, like in our Discord chat. Well, I, I almost wanted to be care? like, before they vote, I kind of want to hear like a debate just in case you guys are on opposite ends here. Like, have you guys fight it out? Uh, well, before we answer, has Darkseid Phil been in controversy lately? I don't keep up with him. Every at all. single day, every stream he does, somebody makes a compilation saying, Look what this big <laughs> retard did today. I'd still probably rather be him, I guess, <laughs> with everything going on. Uh, what about you? Would you rather be that the multi millionaire with no debt anywhere, Dan Schneider, me rich? So, like, I would definitely be Dan Schneider because, okay. like, the thing with Dan is that, like, he's done a lot of terrible things, but there's so many worse people that were underneath him. So he can, like, shuffle all of the bad things underneath those bad talking people. talking about, like, the, be, like, the child actors underneath of him? Or... <laughs> You're saying they <laughs> well, did worse no, things? He, he paid them hush money, so, you know. And he... Oh. he... Whenever you bring up, hey, Dan, why did you do this joke where you're in the hot tub with the child? Why do you show the mm -hmm. children's feet? Why is Ariana Grande doing fucking like pseudo porn in the bed with a bra? And every time they bring it up, Dan says, well, every executive on the West and East Coast had to watch it and agree with it. So he's passing he's passing Holy. that buck so much that <laughs> if, if he goes down for any of these jokes, they all have to. So I think he God might be damn. like in terms of that, he's untouchable, right? I'm not going to say bulletproof, but that's pretty fucking like. <laughs> yeah, and that's all like, he says. He never tries to defend the joke. He never tries to explain why he thought yeah. it was funny. He just <laughs> says everybody else Holy thought it was shit. fine. Holy so shit. <laughs> like no matter if I came up with it, I mean, it went through with checks and balances. Nobody else said anything, right? So right. it should be fine. Right. Okay, uh, so that's a little bit of argument for why Everidge would rather be Dan Biggs. Do you mm -hmm. have any DSP argument? <laughs> no, he might have swayed me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Well, okay, I'm throwing the poll to the chat then. Uh, but no, let's do the game. Uh, okay, Biggs, type in the Discord chat what percent you think will pick DSP. Uh, Everidge, you answer for Dan Schneider, and whoever's percentage mm -hmm. is closer wins. And as usual, I forgot to mute Discord sound effects. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, I can play duck noises, and it'll go right into your ears? Yeah, you can do the Weekend Warrior uh, soundboard. Okay. Hell yes. The poll is... Well, as soon as Eridge submits. Wait, wait. What? what? Just, just <laughs> so type a number. Confused. What percent do you think okay. will answer Dan? Uh, Dan, I'm going to say... Don't say, don't, don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. Before the typing well, is, was, so they don't know. That was a joke. That was a joke. Uh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, the hive mind is now going to some. Okay, that's fine. Let's do it. <laughs> Who would you rather be? Based on uh, our debate or really anything? Mm. Oh, man. Am I not allowed to vote in this one? No, you since can. I'm literally. Yeah, go for it. Fuck it. All right. Come on, guys. Come on. Push it up. Vote if, if it helps Schneider. you at all, Vote I Dan. always lose this game. So you're most likely <laughs> going to win. Oh wow! But I need the percentage. I need. The I think exact we said what within put. within ten percent or something. Closer than the other guy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to win then. Holy shit! Well, at forty some odd votes, <laughs> it's currently sixty five percent would uh -huh. rather be Dan Schneider. Mm -hmm. We normally stop at around half of our viewers. And think about so. it, Dan Schneider. Not only is he a multimillionaire. When in the documentary it said when they fired him from Nickelodeon, they had to like give him like seven million dollars. <laughs> like he he's got a huge retirement fund uh, for being a creep. Like that yeah. was his what reward. Was, what was the deal with? Because like he was still producing shows, but they had kind of like separated him from like the yeah. actual. Right? It sounded like in 2021 during COVID, they kind of secretly brought mm -hmm. him back in to make that uh, the the family superhero TV show. Yeah, right, right. But uh, but more or less, he's a retired man with a lot of riches. Whereas DSP, he's going to be mm -hmm. doing 12 hours of Let's Plays every day for the rest of his life. That's very fair. Man. Couldn't be me. I'd rather be Dan Schneider. He got a severance package for being a pedophile, man. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, he lives in Hollywood. They kind of all do that of on course. a daily basis. 
I don't know if he has a family. If you're his family and he dies, do you take the like pedophile money? Yes. Of course you do. Money. It's clean for you. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're not the one that. Yeah, you if you're anything. Walt Jr., you're taking Heisenberg's money, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Hell, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the real dark side of the story, and uh, Biggs, you didn't watch any of this documentary, did you? I saw bits and pieces. Not, I didn't watch the whole thing. Well, I'd say that the darkest character is Drake Bell's dad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Drake and... Bell's dad, who like understood kind of what was going on, did not fully get it, but like was trying to protect him as much as he could. But like, there's too many forces pulling Drake Bell to do this or that, and yeah, his yeah, dad just the, didn't know. The super fucked up part is that Drake Bell's dad sees that this man Brian Peck, who yep. would later go on to uh, <laughs> no relation to Josh. <laughs> no, no relation. He would do as Drake would uh, describe the worst mm-hmm. things you can imagine doing to a child. He did to me, and he did yeah. not want to get any more specific. Uh, Drake Fuck. Bell's dad thought it was a little strange that this man was, you know, always touchy feely up on his 13 year old son, and he was uncomfortable with it. So he went to like the managing producer at the show and complained, and they said to him, "Well, actually, Brian Peck is a gay man." So you're just being homophobic. Insane. And just then they, insane. they like spread the rumor that he's homophobic and everybody there like shunned him after that. And that's that's a dark thing for them to reveal in this. There were a couple things that just blew me away. The part where his dad was like, well, I'm so glad he never got to you. And like Drake was not like going to tell. He was not going to like reveal that to his dad. And he just had to sit there and be like, yeah, I'm glad he never got to me. Fuck. Man. So that's rough. So, so Brian Peck was the original Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Did some pedo stuff with a boy and came out, oh no, I'm just gay. You guys are being. Mm, well, and yeah. that was even before he did anything to Drake. Like the dad just had the. A dark suspicion and then they shunned mm-hmm. him and got him like removed from his life entirely and his dad says to drake's mom like at, they're divorced at this point and the mom uh it is rumored yeah hates her husband so much after the divorce that she just lost her mind because mm-hmm. the the dad says hey keep drake away from this guy brian peck i i don't trust him yeah. and the mom turns around and lets drake s- stay the night at this man's house like Drake's 14, this man's like 35. The mom's just dropping him off to stay the night alone. And that's when it, this shit started happening. Like this woman, along with Brian Peck, should be stoned, right? Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty bad. But this happens a lot in show business where they see all of these terrible things that are happening and they still go along with it because they're afraid that their like status or money or like just their ability to be in the like community will go away if they don't get along with the abuser. So they just go along with it. It's terrible. Now, Biggs, you are nostalgia Biggs. And you you were telling me this morning, you were a big fan of Zoe 101 and iCarly and all these Dan Schneider productions. And when this news came out, you were, you were heartbroken and angry and you've got, you know, decades worth of buildup of things to say. And that's why you're bringing nostalgia bits <laughs> back. So let's hear it, buddy. Yeah, that was quite the phone call we had this morning. The, what, first heart to heart we've ever had. Yeah, when I said, I sent you a <laughs> message asking. It was me asking, breaking down about Nickelodeon. <laughs> oh, I thought it was me Snapchatting you. Can we move the, the podcast to five o'clock? And then I just scheduled it anyway. And before you could answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, that sounds more <laughs> realistic. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh man, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I guess sadly uh-huh. enough, it wasn't surprising to hear any of that come out because like people have been ragging on Dan Schneider for years. Mm-hmm. Like I remember even back when I was watching those shows, as the episodes were rolling out, people were ragging on him then. So it's like he's pretty much gotten away with it scot free over the years because. Like, everybody knew. It was just, like, a yeah. well-known joke. Open secret, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, on top of that, he's getting paid off for it just to, right. like, go away. So, well, there's not really a, a, whole, a whole lot to say. Like, it happens so much in Hollywood that it's it's never going to stop. I mean, it does happen everywhere is the, the other thing. Because, like, Penn State, 
the huge scandal around that where uh, Joe Paterno was like covering up stuff for this guy who was uh, abusing children like he was using the locker rooms to abuse children using like the like football team like stuff and they would just cover it up. The Catholic Church does the same thing. Like it is most places in powerful groups. Uh, well, that they're able well, to... e. Rich, um, the atheist uh, church does it too. <laughs> so it's not just oh, the do Christians. They? Do they? Is Anton LaVey uh, <laughs> doing this to uh, small yeah, children? I bet Dan Schneider is an, an, an atheist. You would have to be mm, to commit these mm. crimes. Wow. <laughs> Should we see who won the game? E, because sure. after 94 votes, 95 votes... <laughs> It's basically 50-50. This sucks. 53% of people would rather be Dan Schneider. 47 said DSP. Uh, Biggs predicted 56 Mother would want to be DSP. So Biggs is off by... Within nine. Nine. Right? Right? nine. Uh, and E. Rich <gasps> thought it would be 70% for Dan. So he's God off by 17. It. Biggs wins. I think we should wait until there's 100 votes. Yeah. I, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. I, I, I don't think recap. three more votes is going to change the percentage. Bullshit. <laughs> Enough. Bullshit. I was... Closer than I thought I would be. I'm surprised. <laughs> Usually I'm way off on those, like 50 or more. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but Man. here's where the story gets even darker. Because they they had poor 14-year-old Drake Bell. They thought, okay, this kid, he's an actor. Let's make him act. Mm -hmm. And the, the police have him call his rapist on the phone, set up to a recorder, and he tricks him into like a 20 minute conversation where the, the guy admits to everything. He admits to all this horrible shit that he did to this child. Insane. They go to court and this is what like this is what makes makes Drake Bell break down and cry mm -hmm. like nothing else is yeah. that on the rapist side of the courtroom is like 50 famous people there to support yeah. him. Like, despite him submitting evidence, like, just admitting it. And uh, famous Drake's names. Nobody on his side. <laughs> like, 40 famous people submitted letters to the judge defending the man's character. Like, James Marsden from the fucking Sonic mm -hmm. movies. Like, he was just in jury duty. And I jury fell in duty, love. Yeah. And All now right. I'm disgusted. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And then uh, the man goes to prison for like 16 months, gets out, gets a job working on the sweet life of sweet Zach life. and Cody. He just goes, and like, it's Disney this time. Jesus. Rather than the Palladian, but you'd think Disney would be aware of shit that's going on in the fucking industry <laughs> and would stop that. Oh, Disney. they were probably very aware, but they're like, that's why they hired him. Out... He had experience. And they said, you need at yeah. least two years of grooming experience. Oh, yeah, you see, you see how well, well the shows he did went? Like, we got to get this guy on. It doesn't matter what he did. <laughs> but He's the pickle guy. <laughs> the thing is, though, Drake said um, the only person he trusted to tell was Dan Schneider and that Dan was like a very genuine, sincere, helpful friend to him and his family and was very nice. And uh, And then in Dan's response that he posted on Twitter, he gave like a whole bonus part of the story. About mm -hmm. uh, like Drake's mom uh, came to him like asking for help with her testimony, and like in Dan was like weeping as he told the story, like it meant a lot to him. Jesus Christ! So it's like <laughs> I guess he was like a good mentor and role model to the kids he liked, and then just pretty bad to some Completely. other ones. Well, I think he was bad to everyone, generally speaking. It, it's that like. Uh abuser profile of like you want them on your side you want them to be nice to you because the alternative is fucking awful well i don't know the way drake talked about him it sounded like he had admiration for dan i, I don't know maybe yeah. he was just abusive to a select few yeah i think hmm. even josh was saying like he was a good guy and he was just a tough boss kind of thing mm. so it's like it's crazy that people well, but... being on the same set well, has such different mm -hmm. perspectives because but he would obviously... scream at people right like if yeah, you but, were yeah, the but look at us child, who, and then who of us three has not screamed at the other two e rich like you what? also have to imagine like he probably didn't do it in front of everyone else somebody mm -hmm. in that kind of position probably pulled them aside in private and okay. that's when everything happened because it's like i can't imagine if he's doing all that in front of everyone mm -hmm. that nobody's going to like speak up and say you know he probably wasn't that great 
you know. But when you but look at the like, things that he was willing to do on camera, you, you, then you really no, wonder right. what he's doing privately. Like, there's yeah. a lot of him like wrapping his arms around a 12 year old and her mm -hmm. and the girl's right. face, like, ah, you know, like there's making a lot the of, freaked out face. There's a lot of initial permissiveness that allows more and more shit to go on. And if you don't say no initially, then they just see it as carte blanche to do anything. And then like the stuff on camera. Yeah, and where then they're he can like, say, oh, well, she never said there was a problem. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And a lot mm -hmm. of those videos surfacing are so creepy. Like I remember yeah. one clip of him, like he had a, a handheld that he was walking around with on the set of Victorious. And he was like zooming in on Ariana while she's on the ground in like a low cut shirt. And then like, I don't know, it was really strange. It just uh, it gives you the creeps watching it. Yeah, because <laughs> you can see they're all very visibly like not okay with what's going on. Mm -hmm. E. Rich, you seem like a, a Quentin reviews kind of guy. Did you watch what his that his, his eighteen hour review of iCarly? <laughs> no. no, no. Did you read Jeanette McCurdy's book about how she's glad her mom died? No, I, I've listened to interviews with her though. Okay, you big fan. I like her well enough. It seems like she got out of the terrible situation she her mother largely put her in. I wonder um, why she, she wasn't really interviewed for this documentary. I wonder what, no, why not. No. I wonder if she signed something that she can't directly because like she always says the creator. She can't talk about mm. Dan Schneider like directly. So maybe she signed something that yeah, she's not allowed to disparage anyone. Ooh, Patchy's wife in the chat says her mom was psycho. I bet she yeah. read that book or at least listened to it. Yeah, her mom was legitimately insane, it sounded like. A vape cap JB says Schneider probably belongs in prison. Guys, I got another question for the chat. Oh, man. Do you think Dan Schneider, should I say, should be in prison or belongs in prison? What's the best way to word this, E. Rich? Probably deserves to be in prison. Deserves yeah, to be in prison? Yeah, definitely. Definitely deserves, I'd say, like, 10 to 15 years for sure. Like, I don't know how much actual, like, if we we have evidence that he, like, molested kids and was, like, doing awful things, then it should be, like, 50 to 60 years. But, like... What if the rumor that he impregnated 13-year-old Amanda Bynes is true? Then, then yeah, definitely 60-plus years <laughs> I, I don't until think he's that's dead, true. until he dies. <laughs> Hmm. And then JB Lynn Spears got pregnant at 16 as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the rumor I heard that he was the dad of her kid. Okay, do you guys want to take some uh, poll guesses on will they say yes or no? <laughs> sure. Yes or no to him deserving jail. Time. Yeah, how about you both just type in the chat what percentage of you, of you thinks yes, uh, they say yes, he does deserve to be in prison. Mm. <clears throat> I, I should have done I should have done something different here, but you know I'm just going with my heart. I'm going with what I think is deserving. Okay, let's do it. Chat, take a vote. Uh, well, make the case, lawyer E. Rich, and I want you to do your classic Southern <laughs> chicken man voice. I'm just a Southern lawyer. Like, what is the case uh, based on the evidence right now? Of he filmed some uh -huh. creepy pseudo fetish porn of children and put it on TV, uh, how do you turn that into jail time? I think it should be the overall, like, the productions he ran, the people that he uh, went to bat for, um, the, like, conditions on set that he fostered, um, the covering up of pedophiles, and, like, the ability to prey on children, generally speaking. Um, there's not a whole lot with the, like, content that he made that you could say because like there's enough deniability there's enough like oh it's just kids television it's just this or that but there's enough covering up that he did overall and probably enough just general workplace harassment complaints that could be lodged against him that i mean it would probably end up being a fine but i think jail time could be in the cards especially if there's like child stars that he uh, assaulted or should they put him in the pedophile prison so he's like uh uh peacemaker's dad like he's in jail <laughs> but everybody's worshiping him because he's like well, the neo-nazi okay, god not. do they just I have a prison of be... pedophiles because that would be 
They do have prisons for pedophiles. Uh, yeah, so you could be like Dan Schneider could be worshipped in there. And there's a great Louis Theroux documentary <laughs> about uh, pedophiles. Well, they, and... they did say they they uh, did research online and found that a lot of his shows that he made were on like kitty porn sites and that they were being they were like one of the most watched things on there mm. just and unedited like, footage oh, wow. of the show yeah because of the kind of stuff he put in there it was like so <laughs> what would damn. you call it like mm -hmm. like if it's a friendly, tag i guess <laughs> yeah it's like the foot fetish tag yeah well not only that but other stuff like i don't know if they have proof per se but a lot of people said he forced in like bikinis into the wardrobe changes and that he requested photo like photos being taken of the wardrobe so they would go through and like wear everything in the wardrobe and take pictures of it all so then it's like why is he taking these pictures of these you know teenagers in bikinis what's it for can you get in trouble not... for providing children with alcohol that kind of thing cuz i think they were doing that a lot it Depends sounds like they were state. doing that on uh, Ned's Declassified, which did you guys yeah. see they got in hot water for their response to the documentary? Yeah, because oh, they're like <laughs> laughing about it. And he's like, fill my holes. and He's like, don't touch my holes, Dan. Oh, no, that's terrible. I mean, nothing like that wow. happened on our show. But, you know, you got to make wow. humor to get through a tough situation. And I'm thinking, what do you mean? You don't have to. It, you just you're bragging that it didn't happen to you while yeah, Drake, making jokes. <laughs> Drake called them out on, uh, yeah. on Twitter. Jeez. He's like, really, guys? Yeah, he said Ned's D-classless. Yeah. yeah, good one. That's that's on par wow. with uh, West him. Side West Side Boring Story. Boring story. <laughs> People said I should have said West Side Snorry. Snorry. Would that have Snorried. been better? You know that one I would have gone with. That one I would have. <laughs> we wouldn't have West had a two Side minute boring. tangent making me feel bad. <laughs> Not a joke worth defending. Uh, okay, the poll. With 87 votes, does Dan Schneider deserve to be in prison? 78% of people said yes, he should be. Uh, so that makes Fuck. Biggs with a guess of 85 Fuck. closer than Erich is 90. So if I had done, if I had done like 83, I would have won that like instantly. I should be doing the Price is Right rules where it's like. <laughs> well, ideally, you wouldn't have seen his guess, you know. But... True, true. You know, this is uh, it's a ramshackle you know, affair over on this show. We don't really we're know what start, we're doing. We're gonna start bringing him on the show for espionage. I think I have a better chance. <laughs> I was gonna say so I can so I can be, lose to you. Yeah, because Monkey always just like wipes the floor with me. He's always <laughs> like two percent off, and I'm like sixty. Man. It's terrible. I have to. I have to get better at this. I got to start beating you. You're very beatable, it seems. So, uh, Mr. Wizard donated two dollars to say TV knew about this for a decade, and it got mm -hmm. six thumbs up. I did not know that super chats could get thumbs up from the chat. Now that's pretty funny. Wow. A yup for five dollars said, "Which is worse, what Dan Schneider did to your, did or your co-host Florian wanting children to see men nude?" When did he say he wants to see men nude? I I'm think it was during the bros review. Uh, mm. The main, the titular bro said that uh, he went to see a play as a like a fourteen year old, and there's a bunch of naked men in it, and it helped mm. him realize that he was gay, and that he thinks that like all minors should have that opportunity to see gay or naked men in public. Like that's like a scene in the movie, and me and Aggie were like, yeah, I don't. I, I don't think we like that, do we? And Florian's like, oh, I don't okay. know. <laughs> I think there's nothing wrong with it. I thought that was the, what the beach is for. You the just go to the beach. Uh, just like a nude beach in Austria? That's pretty common for them, though. That's why he's probably not. Mm -hmm. It's a very different sexual culture compared to us. Yeah. So go listen to the Bros Review. One of the few times you can hear me, Aggie, and Florian all on the same show. Probably one of the last times, too, huh? Almost certainly. I, I mean, we have to find a way to trick them still. Everidge, do you have any ideas on how to trick them on um, the same I, show? I think, I think tell Florian that we're going to do a review uh, about migration and then just have Eggie come on. Yeah, can we bribe him? Like, give him something he wants in exchange right. for Eggie being there? Mm-hmm. Like find some opinion. Speaking that of which, they agree oh, on. sorry, Irish, I did not. I just got no, excited because no, no, I remembered that uh, Aggie did donate, and I missed the donation, so I got to read it's that. Fine. 
Uh, Aggie gave ten dollars to say Dan Schneider <laughs> uh, equals certified sicko treehouse tubes. Thank you, Aggie, mm. who I believe is hard at work today. Wow, he's a hero. Thanks for the ten dollars. But Erich, please continue on. And actually, I'm going to keep talking until you interrupt me, so that you can get revenge. So just whenever you're ready, I will stop. And then you know who knows what will happen mm -hmm. if you never mm -hmm. interrupt. It, it just never stop. And then I we'll think be Dio's here. going to start soon. <laughs> Dio, can you hear me? I'm lost and so alone. I'm asking for your guidance. Won't you come down from your throne? I need a tight compadre who will teach me how to rock. My father thinks you're evil, but man, he can suck a cock. Rock is not the devil's work. It's magical and rad. I'll never rock as long as I am stuck here with my dad. Oh. <laughs> It's over. Oh. Thanks for that. That was a that was a treat. A touching moment. <laughs> I hear you, brave young Jables. You are hungry for the rock, but to learn the ancient lessons, secret doors you must unlock. You must escape your father's <laughs> clutches in this impressive neighborhood. On a journey you must go to find the this land of Hollywood. <laughs> in the city of fallen angels. Where the ocean meets the set. How many viewers have we lost? At least 20? It's got to be at least. Probably. The Vodka Haze gave two pounds to say, will we get a good burger? Is it Kino? Two pounds? Is that pounds? Is that? The yeah, same? it is pounds. It, wait. Might be. Yeah. What's wait, the difference between a euro and a pound? Uh... I didn't euro that pussy last night. <laughs> no, that's the pound symbol. It is pound. Okay. Uh, Good Burger 2 might be one of the worst films ever made. Really? You saw Good Burger 2? I saw two thirds of it and was so angry I fell asleep. But well, I, gave it, I gave it a letterbox really review anyway. Maybe the last third really just saves it. It's just... You know what movie is good? The Zodiac. Uh, what's that? Yeah. The Zodiac's a good movie. Yeah, so Coastal Fire donated uh, $4.99 to say, so you get in touch with Rusty yet. <laughs> so we're still gonna... planning the funeral, right? Yeah, you never I gave think me we're... dates. Yeah, we're doing the funeral tomorrow night. Is it going to be an open casket or what? Uh, it's just going to be like an online thing. I'm going to record it mm -hmm. and post it mm -hmm. for everybody to watch. Okay, all right. But uh, this is the second installment of a great <laughs> segment called "The Wheel of Jake Gyllenhaal," where we put all 44 as of today with the release of. Uh, What's it called? Roadhouse? The new Roadhouse, Roadhouse movie came out literally today. So now instead of Jake Gyllenhaal 44, it's Jake Gyllenhaal 45. Mm -hmm. uh, we're taking one movie off the wheel and then a brand new one went right back on big. So the wheel did not change the number <laughs> today. But uh, wow. last month, or I guess two months ago, because we went on vacation, we watched uh, Stronger. <laughs> then we landed on this month's movie, Zodiac Radar. Yeah. Rated R. Definitely and, worthy of that R rating. And that's why Erich had to be here, because he's a David mm -hmm. Fincher fanatic. And I am. Zodiac is one of the few six out of five movies on Erich's loved, Letterboxd. I love The Finch Man. I love uh, all of his, his movies. Um, I love Alien 3, or Alien Cubed, as it's called. Erich, should that be a, a Letterbox Pro feature that you can give a movie six stars? Man, I wish, because Zodiac is one of the best movies I've ever seen. I think. Can you just put like the heart and then that kind of counts as a sixth one? It should be bags of popcorn. So it's like five bags of popcorn and then I'd give a little Zodiac letter next to it. Uh, Biggs, you are the Jake Gyllenhaal fanatic, so I'll let you begin. What did you think of Jake Gyllenhaal in Z -Z 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 Zodiac? <laughs> So I've seen this movie quite a few times now and hell yeah. Every time it just it makes me so angry watching this movie cuz it's what? a it's a really good movie. I love the yeah. movie. Okay. But just the the way the police handled so many things and yeah. how much red tape they have to deal with just pisses me off. Every time yeah. I watch this movie, the and fact that, honestly, that they basically catch him like two years into the investigation yeah. and then, yeah, <laughs> right, and they let him go. <laughs> like but, 20 uh, years later, we catch up with him, see what he's up to. 
it yeah. like it's true for a lot of these true crime things I watch where early on they know who it is, but they can do mm-hmm. nothing. They yeah. are tied with their hands behind their back because they all they have is circumstantial evidence. And it's like at one po- at what point does it stop being circumstantial? Like he's got the same literally the same boots that left tracks <laughs> at the crime scene. Yeah. The same kind of gloves. He's got like all this different stuff and like oh man. I not to go too out into the weeds before we start talking about the movie, but it makes me very angry to watch this movie. Well, isn't there stuff where like evidence was entered in one county or one jurisdiction or something and they can't access it because like it has to be transferred from some other thing and like it, it's just it's just such bullshit. It's just like and nobody fuck? has Why a fax machine for some reason. <laughs> so well, they have to mail it. Before fax machines, so. The main appeal of this movie for me is, mm-hmm. as most Jake Gyllenhaal movies are, it's Jake Gyllenhaal. But uh, he also has uh, the Hulk and Iron Man, as as us Marvel yeah. fans might Those put parts. it. Oh my <laughs> god, can you believe it? Uh, they're all friends with Peter Parker again. But, no, maybe. okay, so I gotta stop you there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I gotta stop my ironic Marvel <laughs> shill. <laughs> no, no, no. Something that irritated me when we started, um, when I started watching this movie, because I watched it today, that way I can get a refresher on it right before the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we start watching, and um, my wife was watching with me, and I think she's maybe seen it once, but it was oh, a long man. time ago. So we're watching it, and um, Arbor Downey Jr. comes comes on screen and she's like oh, is that Sherlock? Yeah. And I'm like what? Of all the things he's been in you call him out for Sherlock. Wow. Oh God, it's not a bad God. one. He's, I kind of like those movies. There's, yeah. there's, there's he's, he's up there much. with Johnny Lee Miller as one of my favorite Sherlock's. Uh, mm. there's, there's much better RDJ movies. <laughs> See, I don't know how Anyways, to piss off Erich. I don't know which Sherlock like Erich would care about, so I shot in the dark and he just didn't care. <laughs> I mean, I've only really seen the BBC one and then the... Oh, oh I bet you have. The movie <laughs> one and, yeah, that's, that's about it. Anyways, on with your Marvel shilling. Yeah, so Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal's character, he's not an investigator. He is the cartoonist at a newspaper yeah. who becomes obsessed with the Zodiac mm-hmm. case, and he has direct access to, like, the letters that he's sending to the newspaper, and he, like, dissolves and destroys his entire life just obsessing over this and, and investigating it and solving puzzles and all this. And yeah. he wrote the book that this movie is based on, and then, like, I, I don't know if this is real. It might be some chat GPT making up fun facts kind of bullshit. But evidently, uh, the man himself who Jake Gyllenhaal is playing, after he watched this movie, he then understood why his wife left him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did hear that. I yeah. think I think I heard that. Well, <laughs> it yeah, it yeah. had not occurred to him until David Fincher, like, made a movie about it. <laughs> he's, like, looking at the screen. He's like, wait a minute. Th- that's why. Finally, it was it. that conversation is why she left. <laughs> uh, I might have been a little obsessed with this thing. Oh my god! But this is one of those movies that is the best on-screen portrayal of true obsession, and mm-hmm. as destructive as it might be to an individual's life, it does create to uh, a life not worth envying, but maybe worth respecting or admiring. Mm-hmm. And it creates this amazing book and movie and story. So really, uh, is the lesson here, it's okay to destroy everything in your personal life for the sake of uh, pursuing the ultimate obsession and glory? I mean, if you meet Chloe Sevigny along the way, even if you eventually divorce her, I think it's ultimately worth it, right? If David Fincher makes his greatest movie ever and it's about you, Mm -hmm. surely it's all worth it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. For me, it's hard because I have the the hindsight of everything mm-hmm. and how ultimately it ended up with not being able to close the case. Right. So it would be a hard sell, but I think I think ultimately it would be worth it because it, it that's another thing that really made me mad because it's like watching <laughs> the police trying to put together a puzzle. But each never district yeah. <laughs> had a separate set of pieces to the same puzzle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were never able to put them all together. And so he's running around like a maniac putting all these pieces together from each district. And finally, it's like, 
hey, idiots, you know this call you got, like, literally a month into the investigation? They gave mm -hmm. you your guy. <laughs> like, it's but wild. That is the beauty and the artistry of the obsession, Biggs. He's not doing it for justice. He just wanted to see the Zodiac with his own eyes, and he goes into that hardware store at the end, and he looks him in the eye, yeah. and he knows it's fucking him, and his life's goal inside his own brain has been fulfilled, Biggs. <laughs> he doesn't need him to go to prison. He just wanted to fucking solve the puzzle. Well, I, mm -hmm. I think that was the, the whole thing through the movie, too, with him saying, like, oh, you know, I like puzzles, is... This was the one puzzle he couldn't solve. And, and he did. Mad. And he fucking did. Oh, is that not? What would you rather him solve the puzzle or somehow a scenario where Zodiac is brought to justice, but Jake never knows who it was. Like, I'm more satisfied that this man with the obsession who worked <laughs> as an individual for decades to solve this on his own. I'm satisfied that he is satisfied. Fair sure. If, he, if he's happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, there is something to be said for the victims of the Zodiac Killer that he was uh, <laughs> locked up in any way. Or and speaking of, and... uh, one thing that this movie made me really appreciate is a lack of editing. Mm. Uh, like, the scene when the Zodiac is stocking up on the couple that is sitting next to the lake, there is no yeah. music. It's like and, broad daylight. It's bright outside. Yeah. Like you can see him clearly. Like the way Fincher films everything is just so perfect to like put you at like you're seeing everything objectively and there's nothing hidden. Like there's no cuts. There's like maybe there there's probably some cuts, but it's just like it's just plain as day what's going on. And, and yeah, when it, it brings me back to our during people. our uh, Naroy review, I said that I, I feel like horror movies don't work for me because there's too much editing and it feels too much like a movie with like specific music cues that are trying to influence mm -hmm. me. So mm -hmm. a scene like this where it's very matter of fact of this is probably yeah. exactly what the experience was like for the people as they were about to be killed and then stabbed to death. Yeah. Like there's not scary music playing. It's just a dude softly talking to you that you can't really see. And it's also not like... I don't know. It, it's very matter of fact and plain the way like the stabbing noises are in the audio track. And like, you're not really seeing stat like it, it's very. I don't know, not sexy murder. <laughs> yeah, and me and Biggs, like, you know, thanks to Biggs, I've seen a lot of real world footage of people getting stabbed to death. Mm -hmm. and, thanks to me. <laughs> I don't know if that's thanks to me. <laughs> yeah, you know, but all yeah, those people it, you killed and you filmed it and you showed it to them. And, you know. There's something in about somebody being stabbed in the back repeatedly like that. While that they're is tied just, up and can't even like it just, stop yeah, it. Yeah. Like, ah! it. It makes you wince yeah. just so hard watching mm -hmm. it. I, I think he does a great job of building up the tension in every single scene, like with the, the Zodiac in it. And like, it's both tense, but also it, it doesn't, it seem inherently ridiculous that this guy is like wearing all black. It's like, he's dressed up like a fucking superhero or something like that. And he's going out and like trying to stab people. Do not look at what I'm wearing right now, you rich. No, but like he's wearing that mask. He's like got a costume basically. Like literally has like the Zodiac symbol on his chest. Yeah. Yeah. And this lady's like, Hey, you know, there's this guy coming over. Uh, he's wearing a mask and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, like not to add to the list of things that pissed me off in this movie, but that guy's like, Oh, it's fine. You know, he's just enjoying <laughs> yeah, the right. lake. It's, like, no, it's chill. Go no, get out of there. <laughs> like as someone who is like pretty much always on edge when I'm in public, I have my head on a swivel at all times. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just so paranoid about people. Wait, are you really? Yes. Yes, I am. I, when I am in public, I cannot wait to get out of the public because I don't oh, wow. trust people at all. Do you carry Damn. a gun? Yes. Everywhere Whoa. I go. Everywhere wait. I go. <laughs> You're packing at all times. I'm one, of, I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people that they don't sit with their back towards the door. They don't oh sit God. in corners of restaurants. <laughs> So mm -hmm. for me to see this guy being so careless, like, oh, it's probably just some dude, you know, taking a leak, hiding behind the tree. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> so Biggs what? is like schizophrenic, paranoid, anxious, always like got Listen. his hand on the trigger on his back mm -hmm. with a gun, you, ready for somebody to jump him. When you waste your time watching videos of people randomly getting like shot or stabbed on the street for no reason by some random people, mm -hmm. it kind of makes you a little paranoid. <laughs> 
paranoia, paranoia, everybody's <laughs> coming to get me. Yeah. Just say yes, you I never, never met, met, me. met me. I'm running underground with the moles, digging, digging holes. Up holes. Uh, how do you feel about diggers, Erich? <laughs> Uh, moles in particular are pretty good. Um, people who dig like to like get precious metals. What uh, about uh, like underneath a Jewish temple of some kind in New York City? You know, I was just in New York City the other day, and I really wanted to see some Jewish. Uh, uh, what are they doing? Holes? Was it holes? They were doing? Tunnels, tunnels, tunnels of some kind. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to see a Hasidic Jew pop out of a tunnel and like just scurry away, but I didn't see anything like that, <laughs> <Scurry> unfortunately. <away>. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's uh, some racist verbiage, I think. But oh, is it? I uh, mean, we if take you a... pop out of a if you pop out of a hole from a tunnel, I think that scurrying is one of the things you would do. Oh, uh, we've got <laughs> some sure. some Kino questions but before we continue our Zodiac review. Metal Heart wants to know for five dollars of Jared Library of Lolita Fogel versus Dan. Hold her tighter. She's a fighter. Schneider. Wow. Who do you have your money on? I honestly, Dan Schneider, I I prefer him as a man just because he did a lot of bad things that I wouldn't have done, but he also made a lot of entertaining TV shows. Drake and Josh, you know, I love that show. Like I I'm glad that exists. Jared Fogel, he tricked people into thinking that sandwiches are healthy for you. And he mm -hmm. kind of uh, brought the culture back a little bit. And I think what do you the... mean? Eating a loaf of bread is healthy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I feel like the obesity a... <laughs> rate correlated with that advertising. Eating so... eating a loaf of bread that is like regarded as cake in Europe, <laughs> like surely that's healthy for you. Yeah, do you remember that time we got that cardboard cut out of Apollo Ono from right. Subway? <laughs> yeah, that was one of the uh, main. Was... I think my guinea pig fudge was ripped in half by Cobb in one of our short films, and then his spirit went into Apollo Ono. <laughs> yeah, and that was the character. Good times. Uh, Yup wants to know for two dollars, what's better, Big Fat Liar two or Good Burger two? Both are despicable, terrible one star movies in my book and on my I've letterboxed. Seen... I've seen neither, so I can't speak to this. What What are the movies again? Big Fat Liar 2 and Good Burger 2. Like childhood yeah, kino classics neither. that were followed up 15 years later, or even more mm -hmm. than 15 years in some cases, uh, and they're complete fucking dog shit. And it's not just nostalgia goggles, I don't believe. I mean, Nostalgia Biggs is here. Maybe he can clear up the air, but... I genuinely think that maybe the film that came out when I was a child is just better than the one that came out when I was an, an adult. Is that I, so again, weird to assume? I haven't seen these, but I would have to probably agree because I I almost never have any faith in sequels that come out like five years plus after the first one because they're almost always just bad. As Darko. <coughs> uh, hey, she submitted... A great cameo for Biggs. Go check out what what was that episode like? The, the final episode of Biggs, something, something like that. One of the actresses from S. Darko. Somebody gave her a lot of money to give Biggs a cameo. So go watch that. Nice. Uh, Gonzo Killas says Jake would be good in a Clockwork Orange remake. He's probably a little too old for that now. I think the, the Droogs are what like. Supposed to be late twenties, early thirties kind of guys. I thought they were supposed to be at least like teenagers. Uh, Even though the actors are older, I think they're supposed to be teenagers. Uh, isn't it kind of the rebellious game. spirit of like being in your mid twenties, e rich? You're finally like an could adult. Be, you can go out be. on the town and could fuck be. shit up with your milk. Yeah, let me let me look up how old the droogs are supposed to be. But yeah, Jake's what like fucking fifty. He could probably pull it off. Like, maybe Donnie Darko era, Jake. I don't know. Uh, but Yup says Jake would be good in a gay corn with Biggs. True. Yeah, if it's for a film, it's not cheating, right, Biggs? Yeah, exactly. And if There's it's like... rehearsal for a film that's not being recorded, it's also not cheating. Yep. <laughs> yep. We have Mrs. Biggs uh, on camera confirming this, right? She agrees. Yeah, she's just off camera shaking her head. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, RKO fan 300 for five says, Hey monkey, sorry to ask something unrelated to the show, but what email can I reach out to you to inquire about paying you to review something I made? Uh, you can send that to, uh, Simi and Jimmy business at gmail.com. <laughs> Uh, and Yup says Biggs is likely paranoid due to the traumatic abuse from a monkey. It, did that paranoia? Which monkey? Th- did the paranoia begin around maybe eighth grade when somebody forced you to watch some videos, Biggs? Probably. When you, uh, yeah, the original. What would you say? I just completely lost my train what, of thought. Four guys, <laughs> four guys, one hammer. I think Aww. it was called. Oh man, yeah. There was a lot of things that you showed me that definitely, uh, probably made me paranoid like I am today. I, yeah, I guess people are being horribly, violently assaulted in the streets, so you probably should have a gun. Like, what was right. that? What was the the threads that we kept getting into on 4chan? Where it was like just people getting. I've never been on that website. Randomly killed, like just random people being killed for no reason. Just some guy walks up to him in the street and shoots him in the face. <laughs> Oh my God! They call that the videos. knockout game, Biggs. It's racist to bring up now. <laughs> You're not allowed to bring that up. It's uh, probably videos like that that made me the way I am now. I'm. I I looked it up, Monkey, and I was right. Alex is 15 at the beginning what? of the book, and he's 18 at the very end. So, but but it's supposed to be chapter 21 is when he becomes mature at the end. <laughs> Shouldn't he be turning 21? I mean, he's, he's still 18. Stupid. Sorry. So, so he wrote a story about a 15 year old chasing a woman with a giant plaster penis. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hashtag canceled. Wow. You, you just can't write something like that. <laughs> I'm, as Florian Himsel might say, I'm offended. <laughs> Gonzo Killer I'm says, offended. if Dan Schneider wrote that, do you know how pissed people would be? Oh, oh, Freddie started chasing Carly's mom with the giant dildo. They'd say, Dan, they wouldn't have fucking, <laughs> they wouldn't have, uh, what's his name, making movies about it. What's his name? Clockwork Orange. <laughs> uh, so, not to backtrack too far, but I did have one note for the entirety of um, the Zodiac. Zodiac movie. I wrote 51 minutes in Breaking Bad reference. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? They were sitting in a, in a bar and Crystal Blue Persuasion was playing in the background. <laughs> okay. That's not a Breaking Bad reference. But they just no, used the no, same it definitely song. was. It was a Breaking Bad reference for sure. Yeah. When did definitely Zayn release in 2007? Like a year yeah. before, a year before yeah. Breaking Bad even came out. I was yeah, watching, multiple uh, years before that scene was even yeah, in the show. Yeah, I was incredible. watching a 2003 episode of Peep Show, and they played the song <laughs> "Something Stupid," which is a Better Call Saul mm-hmm. reference. So yes, yes. Everybody just refers to the greats constantly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to read these last really two incredible. and then we can give our final thoughts on Zodiac. Uh, Gonzo Killer says, give this dollar to Biggs for backing me up, LMFAO. <laughs> what did you back him up on? Uh, I guess the Clockwork Orange thing with Jake. He could uh, probably pull it. Uh, ah, okay. Okay. Piazza Cavuar for 10 euros says, was shocked to hear that Biggs is not familiar with Chud. A so-called Donnie Darko expert not knowing that this was supposed to be the film Donnie and Gretchen watch in the movie-going scene. I think that is true, Biggs. Sure. Donnie went on a date and watched Chud. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Coastal Fire for five says, follow-up question, Jimmy. When is the Is It Kino podcast on Hot Tub Time Machine? E. Rich, do you have any interest in that film? Uh, I think it's a little bit overrated. So maybe I'll bring some heat to that episode and just be like, I don't care for it that much. I don't really understand why people love it. Or I forgot that was a it. movie, to be honest. <laughs> what about a uh, hot tub time machine two? without, uh, what's his name? John Cusack. Um, just oh, with Clark. He, he Duke didn't come and, back. Uh, no, he did not come back. Did Clark Duke get canceled for something? I don't know. He's definitely not around anymore. <laughs> Uh, Yup says, what 2024 movies are you most excited for? Better be Mass State Lottery. I Wait. am very hopeful for it. I just don't know if it'll ever come out. 
is Nosferatu this year? The uh, Robert Eggers movie? That might be. Okay, then that one. Biggs, what movie are you most excited for? Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I saw something, I think today, about a new horror movie coming out. Mm. And I Immaculate remember. with Sydney Sweeney. No. No. Oh, man. Imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> movie looks awful. No, I'll uh, I'll look for it in the next few minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, trying to think of what else would. Well, while out. while you're thinking, uh, Yup is going to try to goad us into debating each other, E. Rich. But real quick, Baron Julius von Brunk said, "Dan, the Hyman Divider Schneider." Wow. And Yup says, "Hot Tub Time Machine is way better than Drive Away Dolls." E. Rich, we got into I some mean... heat. We, I mean, yeah. Uh, over true, on Letterboxd, true. we had some real yeah. drama, back and forth uh-huh. comments, shitting all over each other's reviews of the this movie. Yeah, you got to be on Letterboxd to see this stuff. Drive away it's dolls. Pretty, uh, pretty violent. Yeah. yeah. Go follow both me and E. Rich, and go over to the comment section on each review. You'll mm-hmm. see just blood sports, as yep, Donald Trump right. might say, a real blood bath. <laughs> oh, I found it. It's called In a Violent Nature. It's going to be a horror movie from oh, a killer's it? perspective. Yeah, okay, okay. I think I saw something about that. I haven't seen the actual Yeah, I literally trailer. saw that today, but I'm kind of excited for that. That sounds interesting. What's that called? In a Violent Nature. Okay. Uh, it's supposed to come out May 31st. The other movie I'm most excited for that is coming out soon is Monkey Man. Uh, mm, just because, yeah. oh, the, yeah, like the title alone is good enough, but then I'm also hearing that what Dev Patel is that the name of the actor? Yeah, he mm-hmm. like he did most of his own stunts and he wanted to make like a real grisly action mm-hmm. film. He that he, he felt like uh, modern action movies are kind of lame and shitty, and I agree. So he's a man after my heart and my ticket, and I want to see if he really did it. And he said, like, he, like, fucking broke his fucking wrist or he broke a bunch of bones making this movie. Sounds like some real jackass material mixed with action. So, hell yeah, Monkey Man. Maybe it'll go in the monkey box. I don't know if there's going to be an actual monkey in there. (laughs) Well, there's a legendary monkey. They talk about the the white monkey, I think. Mm -hmm. But I think that was like a guy in a mask, right? Motherfucker, you're right. (laughs) God damn. Uh, do we have any final trailer. thoughts on the Zodiac review that maybe I won't post as its own? Is it Kino? Because we did that for Stronger, and it, mm. you know, I would, everybody already it watched fun. it on here. You know, yeah. And yeah. also, we didn't really go super in depth into the entirety of the movie. We just kind of. Well, it's it's the wheel of Jake Gyllenhaal. We'll give yeah. you know we don't need to go super in depth like Kino Corner style. Mm-hmm. We mostly mm-hmm. just want to look at the sexy, sexy man and rank the movies. And I will say, Zodiac's definitely one out of two so far. It's better than mm-hmm. Stronger. Like True. Zodiac is, I think, one of if not David Fincher's best movie. Um, it's like incredibly taut and thrilling and like the scene where jake gyllenhaal is in that guy's basement and the guy's like pulling stuff out for him and i'm on the edge of my seat the entire time but what is actually happening is that's just some gay guy who ran a theater or something and he's just like happy that someone has showed up at his house and is talking to him but yeah. jake gyllenhaal is like practically like trying to get the fuck out of there because he thinks he's going to get murdered. Like it's so effective. It's such a great fucking scene. Yeah. When and I the first moment... watched this movie, it, it floored me. I, it, I was shocked. Yeah. Yeah. Like the moment when he's, cause he's trying to talk to this guy to, to find his friend or something that used to work at the mm-hmm. theater. He's like, yeah, because we think he's a Zodiac killer because his <laughs> handwriting matches these posters he made. Mm-hmm. And the guy's like, Oh, I made that. <laughs> yeah. And they just kind of look at each other and they're like, Oh, uh, cool. And, and then yeah. he pretty much said, hey, did you know only you know, only 1% of California homes have a basement and the Zodiac had one? Hey, you want to look at my basement? Yeah, <laughs> he's like, all my uh, all my stuff's down here. You want to come with me? Oh he's just like staring God. at him with a smile. Oh, yeah, it was super creepy. Oh, my God. Incredible. Incredible. But, yeah, Mark Ruffalo is fucking great as David Dosky in this. Um this is the role that kind of convinces me that he could kind of be uh Columbo if they wanted to remake Columbo with uh Ooh. with uh Mark Ruffalo. 
I'll have to hear him do the voice. That's going to I was going to say, he's got to do a different voice than what he's doing here. But uh, yeah, like he's wearing the same kind of coat for like parts of this movie as Columbo wears. Like that really just ratty, disgusting, <laughs> yeah. plain ass fucking coat. Um, yeah, he doesn't Robert have Kennedy Columbo's Jr. attitude. Like Columbo's whole reason for getting up in the morning is to solve these crimes. Whereas Mark Ruffalo, he's like upset that he's getting called with information at 3 a.m. Like he's he's mm-hmm. fucking pissed, but he, he'll eventually get up anyway after you uh, neg him for an hour. Yeah, mm-hmm. now, Columbo, he my... would have been there immediately. Yeah, uh, I would say my final thoughts on Zodiac. Uh, something I liked about it was. That even though it ran like pretty long, it's what two and a half hours, two hours, yeah, two forty something, minutes, mm-hmm. yeah, right. It doesn't really doesn't feel, feel that way. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't like the whole time you're engaged, and it's like there's never really a, a point where I found myself bored. I guess. Yeah, the filmmaking is so good, and like Fincher is able to like seamlessly intersperse all these like crazy cgi things like there's a scene where they're just building a building and it's like rising up and they're like putting all the windows in it and it's just like that doesn't have to be in a movie about the zodiac killer but it like contributes such a like energy and like you're you're just seeing time pass you're you're seeing like years have worn on as they've like tried to find this guy Yeah, like and, entire parts yeah, of the city are being built. And this guy has just yeah. like, they've given up on looking for him. Like time is right moved on. And only mm-hmm. people like Jake are still like stuck in the past, obsessing over this. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, on, on the time, uh, Eridge can attest. One of my go-to complaints on is Kino is every movie is too long now, but I mm-hmm. have to agree completely. This one, it, it earns every single second, and it's yep. so hard for me to say that about a movie that's over two hours long. Yeah. I could have cut an hour out of Killers of the Flower Moon. What hour would you have cut out of Killers I'll, of the I'll Flower have Moon? To, it wouldn't be like one big chunk. It'd be like, uh, it would be like, like, like a, a minute scenes. here, you know, 30 seconds mm-hmm. there. It, it'll add up pretty fucking quick. <laughs> Are we going to get the monkey <laughs> cut? <laughs> no, because it's not even worth it. Like, you might as well just watch the extended one. There's no... Mm-hmm. But uh, I want you to I, I do want that to happen. I want it to be like the tightest possible edit of Killers of the Flower. What, movie, what if I just like, cut out all of the Lily Gladstone scenes? There's it's no, only the scenes oh of the God. white men. Oh, God. It's like there's literally no time in between dialogue that pe- like people say a line. <laughs> they just cut right to the next line. Like, I mean, I mean, oh, from man. Washington, what about to investigate what the murders? <laughs> what about <them? laughs> who's doing them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but like times 1.3 so, speed for the dialogue. <laughs> it basically turned into uncut gems at that point. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they do talk pretty quick. Well, they never one. stop talking. <laughs> and I would not cut one second out of Uncut Gems. No, no and, I and wouldn't And there's either. a five-minute opening of, like, a black guy's leg all mutilated and bl- bones and blood sticking out. I'd leave and that in. I'd make that longer. Several minutes in Adam Sandler's colon. Leave it <laughs> yeah, all in. It, it kind of... <laughs> His colon is implied to be the universe because you go inside the uh-huh. opal and you can see the whole universe in it and then it fades into the inside of his fucking asshole. Yeah, it's a yeah. deep film, deep inside of it his is. colon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, did anybody get snubbed at the Oscars for this film, E. Rich? I don't know Oscars history. Was this nominated? I don't think I don't think this won basically anything. I think it came out at the right time to win anything, and uh, it's a travesty. This should have won Best Picture. Should've Much like Lily everything. Gladstone, thanks to the Oscars, it will be forgotten in a few years. Mm-hmm. No, that's not true. It will it will live on as one of Fincher's best. It did not receive a single nomination. That can't Nothing. be true. That can't be true. It's true. What it's else true. came out that fucking year? What was nominated? Nothing. Uh, That's rough. It's insane. It's insane. This is fucking stupid. God damn. I think it just w- was released at the wrong time to to get any nominations. Did didn't the killer get nominated for something? Mm, not possibly that I'm seeing. Player no, yeah. Maybe I thought it had at least oh, okay. one. Okay, Biggs is doing the research. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like supporting role actors: uh, Departed, Dreamgirls, Blood Diamond, Little Children, Little Miss Sunshine. Oh, this was the year the Departed one. No, uh, Little Miss Sunshine one supporting role. Oh my god! Um, Forrest Whitaker took leading role for The Last King of Scotland. I've uh, never even heard of that one. That's the one with, uh, what's his name? 
So cinematography, with, uh, Guillermo, yeah, Guillermo Navarro took it for Pan's oh. Labyrinth for mm-hmm. cinematography. Wait, it's not. Oh, oh, for cinematography. I, I thought you were Guillermo del Toro, but <laughs> you were saying his name wrong. No, no, no. <laughs> OK, uh, OK. Navarro. Guillermo Navarro. Yeah, yeah. OK. Martin Scorsese took it for The Departed for directing. OK, yeah, that's the year that Marty finally won. That's what mm-hmm. I was thinking. Uh, should we move on to spinning the wheel of Jake Gyllenhaal, Biggs? Are you ready? Yeah, sure. I would love to see what's on the wheel. It's uh, every Jake Gyllenhaal movie other than Stronger in this one. Wow, incredible. Yep. You ready, Biggs? Uh, yeah, I got up. Okay. I'm not going to be able to watch it live, but yeah, you'll get my delayed reaction oh, oh, one other <laughs> watching thing, the stream. While I have it uh, top of mind, there is a new art contest because for the Dune episode of Visit Kino, we said we were going to have a thumbnail of Erich holding the Dune popcorn bucket, but mm-hmm. he did not send me the photo until literally five minutes before we started this podcast that we're doing right now. Uh, so Everett, should I put the image on screen and then people at home, the art contest will be take this and make, <laughs> make our thumbnail for the Dune 2 Is It Kingdom yeah. and I'll, I'll update yeah. the best one. Absolutely. Do that for sure. Okay. Everybody, here's your image of Erich. Oops. Don't move that Where, one. Where's it going? In the... It, it's on the screen. Yeah. You gotta watch the delayed... Yeah. So oh, take your yeah. screenshot, turn e- e- Oh, I see it now. I see it now. There I am. Yep, do something with that, folks. Anyway, <laughs> the wheel of Jake Gyllenhaal. Let's do it. Uh, Biggs, what are you hoping for? As always, I'm hoping for Nocturnal Animals, because that's another movie that will convince Biggs to carry a gun at all times. Uh, and it also obviously Big say Obviously, I'm looking for Donnie Darko. Um, I think demolition's a good one uh, i honestly you would go like to, to see demolition as your number two like that's that's got i'm be just some looking at jake. the demolition what even is that what the i'm fuck? looking at the wheel i'm just looking around it uh-huh. where'd the wheel go well i, I wanted i wanted to see us for a second there <laughs> <laughs> but there you go it's back I, I like brothers i mean that's like a pretty good under the radar with him and brothers the, is good yeah toby mcguire yeah. Uh, Bubble Boy, I tried to put that on the the PCP poll, and it got, like, second place. So, thankfully, Man. we don't have to double dip on that one. Mm-hmm. Enemy, that could be another good one. Enemy, Enemy is a great yeah, one. Uh, Prisoners is an amazing movie. End yep. of Watch, Source Code. We can be here all day and just read every single I mean, one, I'm honestly. just naming all my favorites, so should I spin it right now? Yep. Let's do it! It's spin it! Spin it! Oh! Spin it! Oh! 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 I'm like 10 seconds behind, so... Yeah, I was going to say, I'm also behind. <laughs> oh my god, it was go, so go, close go, to Nocturnal go, Animals! Go. Oh. oh man, Don't what is it? say what it was. Life? Hey, it was oh, life. life! Nice! Life. All right, all right. I, that's the space life? one, right? That it was is. the one that made so many people mad, because like, oh, Ryan Reynolds film, oh yeah, nice, and then <laughs> he dies in the first 10 minutes. Awesome. Spoilers, Biggs, even I haven't <laughs> seen this film. <laughs> Life, I saw life. Life should be a Venom movie because it's basically the symbiote from fucking Venom. Well, now that we've been spoiled, keep in mind, folks, one month from now or four episodes from now, whatever the case may be, Mm -hmm. we'll be back for installment number three of the Wheel of Jake Gyllenhaal reviewing life. If you want to play along at home, Uh, do we think it will rank higher than Zodiac? No, no, no. Definitely not. Shouldn't. Nope. Is this going to be like a vegetables week? Or we need to. Or is it like uh, more of a mashed potatoes? I don't know. We need to start making a, a tier list of these to put them on, like, uh, so people can visualize how we're. So uh, Zodiac is these. the top, right? Yeah, it'd go in S tier. Yeah. And I would say Stronger is probably it's like a B tier movie. Yeah, B tier. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, somebody at home put this in the comment section if you think of it, <laughs> and uh, I'll give you a heart. It's that easy. But on the uh, on the bright side, they can be excited for next week with some more JoJo. <laughs> oh, is that no? That's not next week. Oh, what? <laughs> it's the week after next week. Oh, I was getting yeah, hyped. Biggs, I did have an idea for, you know, this is season two of Mumkey and Biggs 365. We're still kind of c- coming up with new segments and stuff. I want to pitch one to you. 
Uh, we don't have to do anything for it. It's it's something with somebody else. Basically, once a month, my brother Patchy comes on, and it's his duty to watch every episode of The Good Doctor, like one episode at a time, and he just comes <laughs> on and describes it to us. Oh my god. Sure. <laughs> That, that's a good way to fill space. I mean, people think he looks like the actor anyways. Yeah, right? That's the whole point is that people constantly tell me he looks like the autistic doctor from this TV show that became a Dr. Han meme. And mm -hmm. uh, I think he made it his Twitter profile picture for I a while. I am a surgeon. I am a surgeon. Yeah, so I thought my surgeon brother could come on and describe the show to us. But, you know, maybe we'll just sure. do it one time. Yeah, make know. him watch it all, and then he has to describe the entire show in one go. Yeah, should I make oh, him like... watch entire seasons at a time, too? Mm. <laughs> yeah. And Give then it's a like a 10-minute segment. <laughs> Patchy's wife says people at her work were saying that, too. <laughs> Which, my whole life, I've been told that me and my brother look alike, but I've never heard that about me ever. So it's like I, it's like a curse <laughs> I avoided, and, and I became like the fat one instead. <laughs> Which I'd rather be that than autistic doctor. But mm -hmm. you know, shout out to Patchy. He wears it well. Uh what do your brothers look like, Biggs? Uh my youngest brother looks like Bubbles from the Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> Classic. Uh, Holy shit. Patsy really posted sure the crying the Kino Corner emoji mm -hmm. that uh, only <laughs> members, if you become a member of the channel, you get exclusive emotes and three unaired episodes of Visit Kino are waiting for you. Become a member today. What were you saying, Biggs? <laughs> oh, I was saying I'm not sure about my other brother. <laughs> amazing, amazing comment here. Monkey, you are not the fat one. Two people you're talking to. <laughs> Well, that is the strategy of why I hang out with E. Rich, Aggy, Biggs. Like, as I get fatter and fatter, at least I look slightly less chubby, but it's, yeah. it's still no excuse. Yeah. Yeah, I've been caught. But E. Rich has an important event to get to, and that is yeah. some sort of trivia night, E. Rich. Uh, trivia. How do you... you how do you usually perform at these events, E. Rich? Uh, used to do pretty well, do less good now. Um, what, what is like the most obscure thing that you knew the answer to and like you were the hero of the day for getting it right? I mean, like I definitely answered a Dune question two or three weeks ago, but that's not very obscure. That's just. Do you, do you uh, know what the question was? See if me and Biggs can answer it. I definitely can't. I haven't even seen the movie <laughs> or read the um, book. The question was who, uh, what, what, what book is the character Paul Atreides from? Dune. 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 Good job, guys. You got it. <laughs> yeah. But that, was, like that was really it. They don't that go too it. deep, do they? No, they don't. They don't. Have they ever done um, a One Piece question? I, 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 so like there's, there's picture rounds and like one of the, no, there's no One Piece questions. Um, hey, when somebody becomes a member, around. a picture of me, Biggs, and Shoji Tabuchi pops up. <laughs> <laughs> one of the one of the picture rounds was like TV shows, so like I nailed all those. Like anything with movies or TV, I'm fucking, I'm nailing it. Oh yeah, Monkey, I have a movie you need to watch too that I watched yesterday. It's got uh, Donnie's dad in it, Holmes Osborne. It's called Unthinkable. It's pretty good. It's got Samuel L. Right. Jackson in it, the chick from Matrix. But uh, I think Carrie it's a Ann movie Moss. you would. Yeah, I think it's a movie you would enjoy. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna head out. Okay, Bye, everybody, fellas. go follow E. Rich on Twitter. Yeah, at uh, I don't even remember anymore. T z a r r e v a n. Follow me. I've I've gotten over a thousand. So we thanks, did everyone. it. Oh, nice. I pushed it and it worked. Okay, That's peace, right. peace, E. Rich. All right. Adios. Go in. Now that he's gone, Biggs, tell us why you truly love working with E-Rich. Why I love working with E-Rich? Yeah, I mean, you helped kidnap Apache's wife that one time for that short film. You mean I was, like, the only one there to do that because somebody was a little too scared to, to pick her up? Man, it's gotten really dark in this room, huh? <laughs> E-Rich was the light in your life, for real. Like, you can't even see me anymore. Hold How'd on. How'd you get dark when he left? I don't know. It's 
just getting darker outside, I guess, and less light in the room. I did try to turn on the overhead light, but the switch is off over there, I guess, and I don't feel like getting up to turn it, so. Whatever. We're almost out of here anyway, so. Yep. Yeah, I was about to say goodbye. Uh, thank you to Loot Guy for becoming a member of the Measly Few. Biggs, I didn't think we'd get more than 10 members. We're up to 45 members of the Measly Few now. Like, the Fantastic. comment section on some of these private episodes of Visit Kino have more comments from these people than public episodes of Visit Kino. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole thriving community of people who have six more dollars than the rest of us. Nice. That's why they're the measly few. Uh, yup, for the final question of the night, for two bucks, he wants to know, do we have any thoughts on Survivor 46, Biggs? Have you been watching? I have not been watching it. I have not. Some guy named Banu got the single episode record for the most confessionals of all time in one episode. Really? And then he was voted out the next episode. Dang. So he, he made it four episodes and he has more uh, confessionals than uh, that little Asian girl who won Survivor 41. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> Erica, I think her name was. Yeah. Yeah, Banu was terrible. Uh, it was insufferable. He was a bad character. <laughs> uh, but that, yeah, that's about it. So we'll be back next week for more Monkey and Biggs action, Biggs. You got anything planned for next week? Um, well, I guess uh, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh.